Welcome back to the How to Use CV in Reason series. This is part two and will probably be at least the final part for the beginners part. And I'm able to do something more later. But for now, I kind of wanted to show you the final piece of using CV in Reason and how cool this is and how it brings it all together. And hopefully this inspires you to start doing the same. Before we go farther though, I do want to let you know I've got a free cheat sheet that goes through all of the devices in Reason and gives you a quick summary of them so you don't have to waste time experimenting or figuring out what your best choice is for your track. There's a link down below to get that. Please check it out. Um, and I want to let you know if you've got any questions about using CV in Reason, please uh, just leave them below. I'll be happy to answer them. And now let's watch that intro. Here we're going to take a, we'll start with a monotone again, and we'll just hook up a um, matrix again, and we'll just click random my pattern. So now if we hit play, and you notice it automatically routes the matrix. So that was easy enough, but how do we start doing more fun, advanced things? Well, there's something called an LFO, which is an incredibly powerful and efficient way of doing it. An LFO stands for Low Frequency Oscillator, and it's basically similar to the waves that actually make up the synthesizers. It just moves much slower or lower, and so it's not audible to our ears, but it will move in the shape of these uh, oscillator waves, similarly, like a sine wave or a square wave, sawtooth, whatever. Um, and you can use it to control any other parameter in your synth. So we've got this filter here and I just want to show you, this is like one of the more common uses. If you move a filter, it makes really cool sounds. So if you notice, there's an LFO built into monotone. Most synthesizers around the world have LFOs built into them, and so does Reason, um, and so does monotone. So if I wanted to, right under the filter, there's something called LFO, and this would change how much this built-in LFO controls the frequency. So let's just crank it up. <laughs> which is really cool and convenient if you just want to do it that way. But let's say instead, remember when we were controlling one instrument with multiple parameters? Yeah, let's say we want like all of our synths to breathe in the same way, like, and we don't want to like program at all. Well, this is where CV comes in again. So let's just get another instrument. Um, Thor, sure. And what we're going to do, as you'll recall from the previous video, we'll use a spider, CV merger and splitter. So now we're going to have copies of the CV gate information. And uh, which one is this again? Oh, come on. So you are CV and you are gate. So now they should both be controlled by the matrix. I've turned the L internal LFO off. <laughs> But now let's say we want them both to have the same filter. This is where LFOs come in handy. And this is where one of my favorite, I think one of the most powerful devices in all of reason, the Pulsar Dual LFO comes in. Um, there's a lot of other ways you can source an LFO, but I think this is just a really straightforward and easy one. I do need to make a video doing a deep dive into Pulsar, but in any event, here you have how quickly the uh, LFO is oscillating and you can have it sync to the tempo. So every bar, it goes all the way up and all the way down. You can also sort of see the light by it and you have the level, which is how extreme it is, right? How much the frequency knob is affected by going up and down. So if this is a, a, the value, the values for reason are zero on the left, 127 all the way on. So if we have the level low, it's not going to have as big of an effect. If the level's higher, it's going to have more of an effect. This is the shape of 
what the effect is going to look like. And this is how quickly the rate is, how quickly it's going to happen. So what I want to do is create, basically, you'll notice that Pulsar also has a bunch of, well, it has two CV outs, which is exactly great for what we're doing. So I'm going to drag the CV out of LFO one first to the filter frequency of the monotone. And then I'm also going to drag it to the filter frequency of Thor. So now if we hit play, we should notice the frequency sweeping, but I'm going to turn the filter down a little bit on Thor so we can actually hear it move. So that's not what I would call musical, but it's really a powerful illustration of how you can quickly start making everything work together, sync up, and create these really cool natural sounds that just go and do cool things. And then we could even take LFO2 here, we could turn it on and at a much slower rate. And we could change it to, you know, I don't know, uh, Sawtooth, sure. We can hook this one up now to the filter resonance of um, the monotone. By default, we can't get into the filter resonance of Thor, but many other Reason devices have just a generic CV. So this says CV1 on it. So we can drag this into CV1. Then if we flip Thor over and go to the programmer, there's a lot going on right here. But let's do one more thing and let's just clear the first one. And most devices have something like this. The source of this is going to be, if you recall, CV input one, right? We have Pulsar, we have LFO two from Pulsar one dragged into CV one of Thor. Remember that level control on Pulsar? Every, most instruments also have an input control. So it's like, how much does it affect it? So you notice these guys have sliders here and you can turn down how strong the effect is. You can either control it at the output with the level on the Pulsar, or you can control it on the input. We'll just keep it all the way up so we can really hear it. And what do we want CV1 to affect 100%? Well, we want it to affect filter, uh, where's filter one? Um, let's actually do the global filter, which is filter three and the resonance of it. So it should control this right here. And now if we hit play, is really cool. We can do all sorts of other stuff too. Like we can take the inverse of this CV here. For example, we could go to the mixer channel, right? This controls, if we go to show programmer, every channel has a bunch of CV built into it, which you can use to like do internal programming if you wanted to, um, or like control multiple effects at once. Sure. The combinator is an even more powerful way to do it. Um, but you also notice here there's level and pan. And so we can turn the pulsar into something that also controls the panning of this instrument. So let's listen now. And it's one of the reasons this is so powerful, right? Is like you could have over the course of the song, like if you wanted the chorus to be a different rate of vo like automation, you know, you could be like, and 
you've controlled so many things with one knob. Plus, sometimes it's unpredictable, which is cool. It's inspiring. It's organic. Using CV is like, this is the tip of the iceberg, but this is sort of some of the ways that it works. I hope you enjoyed this. And if you've got any questions on using CV and Re Reason, please leave them below. And don't forget to download that cheat sheet. Bye.